God bless you everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so thankful that you guys made it here to the house of the Lord. I personally can tell you that it's been a battle. Those that have been in class with me this morning know what happened to Pastor Carlos and I as we were um, coming to church. We had a flat tire and had to go back home, switch cars, but still made it. Okay, and I know there's, it is always a challenge for some reason on Sunday mornings to get to the house of the Lord. But you made it. So we count that as a victory. Yay! Praise the Lord. Right? Okay, I'm here just to give a couple of announcements um, before we pray and, and go into worship. Um, I have up here a worship night that we'll be having. Um, and we're not going to have it here in the set church. We're going to have it in the activity center slash fellowship hall. And it's going to be in November. Still the date, it hasn't been, but we know it's the beginning of November. So I want you to save the date, prepare, because it's going to be a different worship experience. And we're going to dive in into, uh, into the presence of God in a different way. And so save the date, spread the word uh, as we prepare for that. Uh, and if you want to be part of that team, if be a team, please let uh, Patrick or myself know as well. And then uh, uh, we have also classes um, before service at 9.30 to 10 a.m. Sometimes it goes a little bit over. Um, we're finishing up the Fundamentals of Faith and in September, September 9th, we'll be starting a class on communication. So if you want to know how to communicate better, things like that, join us in class on September 9th. Okay? With all that said, I want to just uh, remind us, and I have this shirt on, it says, it's, it's in Spanish, but it says rejoice, you know, and it says, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength, you know, so let's start off with that, that the Lord, of, uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and that he, we are here in his house, and that we're here to ready to worship and praise his name, so I would invite you all to stand on your feet as we get ready to worship. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your love and your care for us. We're so thankful for what you have done and the things that we have not seen that you have done, Lord. And in this day, this morning, we want to give you praise and all the glory and all the honor, Lord. And as we enter and worship you, Lord, as we enter your throne room, Lord, transport us there, Lord. May we be lift up our hands. May we dance and shout for joy because, Lord, you are so good to us. So thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you, Lord, that we have our pastor here, Pastor Mike. And we're so grateful for you. You know, as the church is having an interesting and Lord, you're, we can see here that our prayers are being answered. We're so thankful, Lord, that you love us individually, that you love us, Lord, unconditionally. Lord, and that I just pray, Lord, for those that are still um, on their way, Lord, that you will just hurt. Lord, I pray against anything that may take us away from our fixing our eyes on you and just glorifying your name. We we love you, Lord, and we pray, and we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.
Now, uh, who's all ready for the Lord to come back? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what we're waiting for, you know, uh, for the last man to come to the Lord and we're not going to get it. But look around us, you know, and you know what this is. A lot closer than it was 2,000 years ago. So, you know, uh, we need to be ready. Actually, you know, the way I think sometimes is if the good Lord came and took me today, it's like, it's the rapture. Because I'm already gone. Either I was or I wasn't. It's too late to go. Let me go back to where I believe. So, let's all be ready. Like, you know, God is coming tomorrow or today. We need to, we need to be ready because God is so good. So, it's the the uh, that time for the tithe and offering, you know, I know we all can't wait for this part. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just give him a joyful heart. And God is this good. He gives us, He gives what we can give to others. Amen. I'm going to be reading today from the uh, Exodus uh, 35 22. And, and it says, uh, Both men and women came all whose heart was willing. Some brought to the Lord their offerings of gold, of earring, rings from their fingers and necklaces. They presented gold objects of every kind to the Lord. You know, man, back then maybe it might have been gold and all that. Today, you know, the Lord blesses us in many ways and in all kinds of other ways. And one way, of course, is money. And, and of course, we need to live and we need money here on the earth. But, you know, when the God gives us, we need to give Him back. Because it's the trust that we put on Him like that. If we can trust Him, we can get it. If we don't get sometimes it's like, well, I don't know, God has to come through for me. We need to trust God with our heart. We need to give that to your say, God. And you watch what God does. Yeah, watch what God does. And my Father, we just thank you, Father, for being so gracious to us. That you chose us, that you that you love us, Father, that your son died on the cross and took our place. We ask you, Father, that as we go through this journey here on earth, that you help us with that giving heart, that you help us to be humble and loving and caring, that you help us to give, Father, not to get give in return, Father, because you know what we need, Father, you know what, what we need tomorrow, what's going to happen tomorrow. Help us to trust you and to love you. And just to give all the freedom from the heart. Again, bless his money. And this uh, then spread out to everywhere it needs to go, Father. And you know. And continue to give us what we've never been needed of physical, financially, or, or spiritual food at all. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we just thank you.
Amen. It says, come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. I don't know if we're already awakened, but we gotta wake up. Let me tell you, you know, I was listening and, you know, following up just on, I like sports. How many of you guys like sports? Yeah. Some of you guys know I like sports and um, I was just watching um, some, some games from the Olympics and I, I just kept seeing like medals going left and right and then I saw some really good golden medals that a lot of people won and let me tell you the United States is one of the cities that um, I mean one of the countries that had the most golden medals and I saw these people celebrating on the uh, uh, some of these people celebrating their medals. And then as I was watching how they celebrated, uh, let me see if this works, all right? One, two, three. All right. As I saw uh, how these people celebrated, uh, and as we were worshiping right now, I was just thinking about, you know, I have my crown in heaven, and that we were worshiping that the, the trumpet was sound. And God and Jesus will return. So that's a victory. We are, we should be living in victory. We should be awakening. Look and see how people celebrate, how they won um, these golden medals. And um, sometimes us as Christians, we're like, you know, we're always down for some reason. When we should be celebrating every day, joyful. And he can talk about being joyful every day because we have a victory. You know, and I, um, I was, I was uh, this this morning. I was talking to Jonathan, and I gave a word with, uh, the PowerPoint slides, and he looked. Uh, he he made that look. The victory is yours. That's what this message is gonna be about today. That the victory is yours. So look, how many of you guys feel victorious today? Because I feel victorious. Things happen. Yeah, things happen. I can just share. This morning I woke up as I was driving to church. I had a flat tire, and I said, you know what, let's head back home, let's grab up uh, the other car that we have, but this ain't going to stop me from going to church today. So, you know, look, um, God made a way to make it, for me to make it to church today because I know that the enemy doesn't want me to make it to church because this is where we come as a community, where we come as a family, and we learn and we, and, and we encourage each other, and we go out there, and we get awakened, we get an awakening, and we get a revival so that we can go out there and share the gospel. That's, a, that's God's purpose that for us. And so we can go and share our gospel and, and be able to bring more people into, from the community here so that there is an actual revival in San Bernardino. Or in the cities that you're in, in your houses, right? In your households with your families. Yesterday I was I was with my mom and, and my parents were celebrating a, a, a birthday celebration, and you know, um, it turned into a, a conversation about about Jesus, and, and people were listening, and I'm like, whoa, God, what? Every, every moment I just want to speak about you because I want to be fired up for you because we know that you know the day is gonna come when that trumpet is gonna sound, and that God and Jesus is gonna return, and we're gonna be victorious. But we want to take as many people with us as we can, right? So the victory is yours. If the victory is yours, do you live a life victorious? Sometimes, look, I gotta share with you. Sometimes we like to take control. How many of you guys like to be in control of your lives? I, I, I have not met anybody who says I, I don't want to be in control of my life. Everybody wants to have control over your life. You want to control uh, control over your own life, right? And before we get started, I want to, uh, uh, before we start uh, uh, reading the verses, let's just pray, all right? So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. I just want to ask you that, you know, you use me as a vessel to be able to deliver the message that you have for your people, Lord. And thank you for just being a good father. Thank you for this worship. I uh, worship you this morning, Lord. And we just want to continue to uh, uh, pour out into our, uh, our communities. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to be uh, uh, what you're going to be doing right now with this message. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Let me share something a little bit with you. And this is happening with a lot of people um, in, the, in the church because their teenagers are growing up. And I have one. How about a teenager? Yeah. And let me tell you, it got to the point now that he's starting to drive. And woof, he's not a headache. I forgot how much of a headache I was to my parents when I started driving. That now my teenager is starting to drive. 
So I don't know if you see me once in a while, I'll let them go out through the parking lot here, and I'll let them drive on the streets. But I brought this chair to give you an example so you can see what's going on. So um, one of these days, the first time that he, he got into the car, it was right here in this parking lot. No, I don't want to, I, I might need counseling after this because I'm, I'm kind of like, um, I might have PTSD after this, but no. But here's the thing, so, so I sat down, so you come in here, you guys know it, I sat down. And then Jonathan sat on the other side of the steering wheel. It's been a while since I haven't been on the steering wheel. So for those of you guys that don't know me, like I, I drive all the time. Like a heavy car hardly drives unless I'm, I'm sick or something's going on, but I drive all the time. So Jonathan was sitting there, and I tell him, Jonathan, let me show you first everything how it works. This is how you turn on the car. My car is just a push button, so you push it and it turns on, right? You, this is a brake, this is a accelerator, right? And then, and then you get the handle and you put it on me. And then if you want to go on reverse, you put it on R. And this is how you drive, you know? So he starts grabbing the, he starts grabbing the wheel, he turns on the car, and I'm like, I'm already sweating. I'm like, oh, how's this gonna work, you know? I hope he doesn't hit anything, you know, especially right here in the church. You know, we sit, we, we sit there to repair some things, I don't want to repair any other stuff, but okay, let's do it, Jonathan. So he goes on reverse, and he starts letting go of the, of the brake, and then as he's going, I see that he's not turning correctly, and I grab over the wheel and I move it for him. Mm. And I'm like, ah, whoo. And I say, stop, and then he stops. And then I say, go, oh, and he starts going. And then, you know, but I give him specific directions. If you go this way, the wheels are gonna turn this way. If you go that way, the wheels are gonna turn that way. I explain to him everything that's going on, but I had no control. And I was like, whoo. I'm not, I'm not built for this. I don't know how these people work with that train the students on how to do this. I'm not built for this. Let me tell you who is built for this. Angelica, right? She has so much patience. She's able to grab the steering wheel with one hand and help him out with one hand. And she's so patient. But with me, I was like, I can't do this. This is this is this is hard, right? So I'm looking at the steering wheel and then I'm thinking to myself, man, why can't I also have control over the car on this side so I can help them out? That would be a lot easier because I want to take control, right? And that's how things are in our life, right? When we look at it that way, we want to have control over our life and we, we forget that we have to let go. When Jesus takes the wheel, let him take control of the wheel, right? He's gonna, he's, he's gonna, he's, he's gonna be safe. Don't worry about it, you know? Now that I, I, Jonathan is driving a little bit more, I feel more confident, right? Now I see him, and he has been teaching him day in, day out on how to drive for four days, five days, and now every time he gets in the car, he's more confident on driving that car, right? So now when I, if I sit down next to him, I feel more confident, right? So sometimes that reflects our life. When we see Jesus, right, um, and, and we see that he has taken control over certain situations, we know that he's in control and we let go of the wheel a little bit more. But we gotta get to the point where we're gonna be like, Jesus, you take the wheel. I don't need to be uh, taking care of the wheel. You take control and you're gonna do, uh, I know that there's gonna be a victory behind my life, right? With that said, we're gonna go to our first verse and uh, we're gonna read it out loud. And we're gonna be talking about the walls of Jericho, right? So if you have your Bibles or if not, you can just read it off of there. And uh, some of the story I'm gonna quote, I kind of go a little bit fast. I'm gonna kind of um, uh, paraphrase, I won't go um, um, verse by verse because if not, we'll be here probably the whole night and we won't finish, right? So um, on verse number one, on Joshua 6, verse number one, it says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went in and no one came out. Can you imagine that? These gates were so big, so strong, that nobody was able to go in or go out. They were so secure that nobody was able to go in and go or go out. Let me tell you something. When we put limits to God, when we put limits to God, guess what? He's gonna break them, right? We see them day in, day out, um, um, in the past history, right? I could give you a couple of examples. Number one, let me tell you, they said that the Titanic, not even God, could shrink it. Uh, sink it, I'm sorry, sink it, right? What happened? 
son. Yeah. So let me tell you, when we put limits to God and you test God in those areas, He's able to make that possible. Possible. He's the creator of the, of, of, of the heavens and earth. He owns everything. Everything's His. It says that those gates no one could get in and get, or could get out. Our life, if we look at our lives, sometimes we put our life in a box. And we're stuck to our own ways. And we say, you know what? This is how I was born. This is what, what I know to do. And this is what I get stuck to. Well, let me tell you, with God, everything is possible. Those, those gates, those walls could fall. And we saw it happen with the walls of Jericho. Right? So let's go to the next verse, Jonathan, please. It says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into the hands along with his king and his fighting men. God told Joshua, you're going to have a victory, you're going to go through those walls, and you're going to go through that battle, and you're going to win. Right? That's what, God told, that's what God told Joshua. The victory is yours. But, it didn't end there. There were specific instructions of what Joshua need, needed to do in order to win that battle. There were specific instructions. He said, you know what, you're going to get the priests, and you're going to get them with the trumpets, and you're going to be circulating those walls for six days. On the seventh day, you're going to go around it six times. On the seventh time, you're just going to you're gonna, gonna sound the trumpet, and you're just going to scream, and you're going to charge in there and take control because those walls are going to fall. He gave the specific instructions on how they were going to gain that victory. Let me tell you, how many of you guys read the Bible? How many of you guys have uh, uh, that, that relationship with God where you speak to Him, you pray to Him, you, you're there with Him? Look, there's a specific instructions of what we need to do here while we're, we're here with it, while Jesus returns so that we can have victory. But sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget the instructions. Or sometimes you say, you know what, I don't want to do that, God, because, you know, I don't feel like, like doing that specific part of it. But there's specific instructions of what we need to do. And this is what happened. He told, he told Joshua, you have these specific instructions. Please follow them so that you can have victory. And guess what happened? On that day, Joshua went around for six days, he had the trumpets blew something every day. On the seventh day, they, 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 they went around those walls six times. On the seventh time, they blew the trumpets. Everybody shouted. Can you shout? How many of you guys are loud? I am. I see you guys. I see you guys with football games. I see you guys uh, on stadiums and you guys are loud. Amen. Right? Yeah. So why can't we be loud with Jesus? Amen. Right? Amen. So at the count of three, the whole church is going to say, Jesus. You guys ready? Yes. One, two, three. Jesus! Jesus! Wow. Hello. Right? And that wasn't even close <laughs> to how, 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 uh, how, how powerful that shout was. Toes. That, you know, the, the, the walls of Jericho just came down. Boom! They dropped. They dropped and they charged in there and they took over the, the city. Imagine. They had victory. God had already told them, you are gonna, you're, you're gonna be victorious. You already won, but follow these instructions. But one instruction they didn't follow. And it said, do, do not take anything from there. Right. Do not take anything from there. Because if, if you take uh, if you take something, there's gonna be consequences, right? Just imagine. And he falls on the tire on the uh, on the tire. Let's call it an entire clan, right? It will fall on them. 
Now let us put it in perspective, right? Let's put it in perspective. Let's say all of us are a city. We're the city of neighborhood church. Or high city of neighborhood church. Are you ready? We're gonna go to battle. You guys ready? We're gonna go to battle. We're gonna go fight. But let me tell you, there's specific instructions we're gonna do. We're gonna win. God has already told us that we're gonna win. But let me tell you, the one thing we cannot do is do not take anything from what we're gonna conquer that place. All right? And I'll put my son on glass because I love putting on the glass. So then Jonathan, we go into battle and we already won the battle, but Jonathan likes some Nike shoes that one of the other teenagers was wearing. Some Jordans, let's say some Jordans. So he takes those Jordans, he takes them to my house, and then he hides them. He's like, I love those Jordans. Those are rare. So that's why I took them. We didn't follow the instructions that God has told us to do. So there's consequences. And guess what? Every uh, uh, so, so in this perspective, what happened is Joshua, uh, they won this battle over, over this huge, the over Jericho, which was a bigger army than the next battle that they had, which was, uh, um, remind me, uh, Ea? Ea? Yeah? And it was a, a, it was a, a lot smaller. And when they went into battle, he said, we don't, take, we don't need to take all of his army. We don't need to. It's a small, it's a smaller, it's a smaller army. We don't have to take every single man. We're going to be able to destroy it real quick and we come back because God is with us. So he goes in there, they go in there, and what happens is they lose the battle. And, and Joshua's like shocked. He's like, how can we lose that battle? We lost a man. We lost people. We, 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 why? Why God? And, and God comes and says, look, Joshua got so upset that he, he got on his knees. He, he ripped off his clothes and he was face down with God. And he was like, God, why? Why did we lose this battle? We had to win this battle. And God said, there was sin committed in the last battle. I want you to go back into every tent and, and double check if somebody took anything from there. And guess what? They found one guy who had taken some silver and some gold in a row. And he had hidden it. And that, that's why they had lost that body. So I want to encourage the church we call each other brothers and sisters. We call each other a one family. We call each other one, 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 one church. When somebody's hurting, it affects all of us. I like to, I, I like to give glory to God because let me tell you, our pastor's here today. Right? He's here today. I don't know, we were just talking about this, but he's glowing. Man. You know when you have when you have that time specific with God, when you come back to church, it's just something that reflects you that you know you've been with God. You know when I drove into the parking lot, the first person I saw was Pastor, and I saw that glow in his face, and and, and I was like, whoa, like he's been with God. And, and, and him having our leader, uh, 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 our pastor who God has put in place in this church and seeing him after not being, see, uh, not being able to see him for a couple of weeks, it just brings joy to everybody and it affects everybody because we know that God is in control and God brought him back and we give God the glory. But it goes, it goes, it goes both ways. When we see somebody who's suffering, who's struggling, do we feel it as a church? You know, and we look at our body, right? You guys look at your body, right? Have you guys ever hit it? Uh, I, one, the other day I was just walking and I hit a, what they call a funny bone. I don't even know why they call it funny. Because then it is so funny when you hit on that, you know? And, and it started hurting. Yeah. Right? And no matter where it was, it's part of my body. It hurts. Right? Yep. But, and, and we're all one body. We're all part of the body of Christ. 
So when one person is hurting, we are hurt. And in this, this case, um, 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 this guy had taken these things, this golden, golden uh, um, um, stone and, and the silver and the rope, and he hid it. And then when they, when they captured him, they got him and they took him and they said, Why did you do this? We had a specific instructions from God not to do this, and you ended up doing it. And let me tell you what this cost. This cost for some people to die in our village. This cost us to lose the, the, the fight. Why? Why did you do it? Ooh. If we look at ourselves, sometimes are we hurting the church? Sometimes we're on this hand? Or we're hurting the church? Or sometimes we're on this side, or we're kind of judging, like, what happened? Why did you do this? But at the end of the day, it hurts us all as the as, as body of Christ. We need to learn to be able to follow directions. Just like I told Jonathan, let me tell you, Jonathan, we tell something. And you follow the directions, you will be okay. If you decide not to follow directions, there's two things that might happen. Number one, you might get pulled over and get a ticket. And that might be a warning that you're not supposed to be doing that. That you gotta make sure that you're following directions and that you're, you're following what the law says. Because it keeps all the cars running the right way. Or number two, you might get in an accident. And that might be a little bit more of, of a severe either warning, right? Or you, if you put on your seatbelt, right? How many of you guys don't wear seatbelts? I don't want to know. But let me tell you, wear your seatbelts, right? Because how many people have died from not wearing seatbelts, seatbelts, right? So, Jonathan, you have to follow directions. If you follow directions, you're going to be all right. That, that, that sometimes the other, the other cars are not following directions, it might happen. Let me tell you about my first accident. <laughs> That's been a while. I was 19 years old when I had my first accident. But it wasn't my fault, right? A lot of the, a lot of the accidents that I've had, people have hit me because they were not following the directions. Sometimes they're like, you know what? I just want to run the red light. It's okay, I'm going to rush. Run the red light. And that happens. Sometimes they, don't, they decide that they don't want to take those stops, those stops, and they just take it. And those, those things cause accidents, right? But that's because we don't follow directions. So today I want to I wanna encourage the church, I want to tell the church that we need to learn to follow directions. And it's simple, right? It's simple, but it's hard. Because the enemy is always trying to take us off course, right? When I started driving, I remember that um, I was like, so why, so why can't, why do we kind of have to slow down and yellow? Maybe I should just take it. And so I, I saw that I kind of almost got into a few accidents because I kept going faster on yellow instead of kind of letting it uh, kind of stop while the rest the red light was coming, right? Because some people are ready to go in, you know? But we need to follow directions. As I was going through, through this message, it came to my mind and I said, God, in the first place, why would somebody not follow your direction when it comes directly from you? And I started getting judgy at one point. And I said, if it came from God, I gotta make sure I, I follow those directions. But then I started thinking about my life and I started thinking about what was, what was in, my, in my heart and, and how I didn't, uh, myself, I didn't follow directions myself. I remember when I was a teenager, I read the Bible over and over, and I didn't. I, I did not follow some of the, some of the things that were in the Bible. 
I said, no, you know, because I was a rebel, right? But now I want to make sure that everything that is written on the Bible that I listen to and that I'm able to follow those directions because that's going to bring me victory, right? And maybe you're here today and you're like, what? what is this guy talking about? I have no idea what the Bible is or, or what victory is he talking about, you know? Uh, but let me tell you, there's, there's our God that, that we serve and that we worship. He came to this earth to die for us. And he came, and he came here and he died so that, that we, at one point, one day he's going to come back for his church. And if you accept him as his Lord and Savior, we're going to see him, and we're going to be with him. And, and, and that's what we call victory. That's our victory. That's our victory that I'm talking about. That we already have the victory. We already won. But there's something that God has called us to this, this specific place, this world, to be able to share the gospel so that we can take people that, that, that we already are. Some of us here in the church, we're already saved. We have Jesus, we have accepted Jesus in our heart, but we want to bring as many people as we can, and we want to share that gospel with them, and we're going to continue to bring people, but we, because well, that, that's what God has called us to do. And let me tell you, everybody's going to get a chance. It says, look, uh, in the assemblies of God, we send missionaries all over the world. We send them out because we know that uh, the gospel has to be taught and, and, and it has to be shared with everybody in all parts of the world because everybody's going to have a chance to either say yes to God or say no. There's no lukewarm. Either you accept God or you don't. And if you have accepted God into your heart, let me tell you, the, the medals that I was talking in the, in, in the beginning about the Olympics, that has nothing to do with it. Let me tell you, there, you're going to have uh, even better. You, you already won. You have a, a, a crown and then a place with, with God. That's, that's the biggest victory you could ever win. Amen. Some students play, play out Fortnite, play all these games, and they get all these victory, victory, royale, and stuff like that. Hey, none of that matters. What matters is a victory of you going to uh, be with God once again. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine just not being with God. I would just, if, even, even now, if I have not accepted Jesus into my heart, I don't even know where I will be. For some of you guys, it's the same story. You guys go back and you guys listen to your testimony and you guys know how God has deliberated. He has broken those walls from Jericho and you have been experienced to know what it is to be with God. Thank you, Lord. And I would think about it. What would you do without God? Where would you be without God? And as we look at our lives and we reflect upon that, let's go back and, and let's look at the people outside of our, like within our range hood, and look, what would God be, what, what would that person be with God? Because right now what's happening is that it's not, it's not looking so good for them. So God has called us to go and share the gospel and plant the seed. That's all he has called us to do. It's his, like it's our job. He uses us as an instrument to go and deliver that message. And then, and, and then you just let it go. Because God is in God's plan and God is going to work with them specifically. Today I want to share that we need to go out there. We need to continue to, to bring in more and more people towards God. So that look. I share the gospel left and right at work or wherever I'm at, and it don't matter if they would come to this church because they they live further. What I want is that I want to connect them to a church where they're gonna be able to feel like at home and that they're gonna they're gonna receive what what, what we're receiving here today. Amen. That God is gonna speak into their hearts. But we need to do this. It's day in day out that we need to do this. We have to make it a, a part of our DNA to be able to. Do, to, to, to share the gospel with others. And not only that, but if we get a chance and, and God has blessed us to continue to, to also um, uh, provide for those missionaries to go out there in the world and share the gospel. Because that's, that's our main job. That's what God has called us to do. Some of us have um, a regular job, secular job, we could call them, but our main purpose in this earth is what God has called us to do, is to go out there and, and, and deliver the message and, 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 and to all corners of the world and baptize 
in the name of the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We've done this here left, uh, day in, day out. But how, how often, what was the last time you shared the gospel with somebody in your community? What was the last time you shared the gospel with somebody in your household or around you? What was the last time? We have to, we have to awaken. We have to be, we have to be intentional. Because let me tell you, uh, I'm just, in the schools, they're being intentional with our kids. Yeah. And we need to be, we need to be, we, are, we need to be intentional. I was so, and I, I'm happy to share with you guys this, but, you know, um, John, Jonathan is a senior in high school, you know, and be praying for him, because I know that the enemy is going to try to attack him. Let me tell you why. Because uh, this, uh, yesterday he received a call. He applied to be the vice president of a, of a Christian club in, in, in high school. And they gave him the position, right? They gave him the position. But what does that entail? He, we were sharing, we were talking. He said, Dad, you know, the, my first event that I want to do is called See You in the Pole. Is to go and pray for my school in front of the school with all these guys, uh, the Christian club, and be able to be intentional to pray for our school. And I said, Son, that's good. And then he said, I, I have all these plans that I'm going to do because I want that club to continue to grow as, as I leave high school. Something happened with me in the clinic while I was in camp. And I was looking back and I said, son, you know, that's good. We have to be intentional with our schools. And I know that the enemy is probably one that is going to try to attack you. But you got to be strong and stay strong. Let me tell you, I'm not sharing this with the church because i got to tell you that I'm going to ask them to be praying for you. Because we know that, you know, we're going to be intentional in going into those high schools so that the, that the kids are able to receive because those are our future, our future, our future pastors, our future, our future ushers, our future leaders in the church. But we got to be intentional. We have to be able to listen and be able to uh, 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 follow directions to where God is calling us. I say, son, if that's what God is calling you to do this year, I'm all for it. I'm going to be able to support you. You guys need pizzas to bring some students? I'll guide you to some pizzas. What is it that you guys need? I don't care what you guys need. What we need to do is we need to present the gospel to every single age, age group, no matter what age group it is. And as a church, if we look around, you know, our kids are not here because they're always caring. But if we look around, every problem that we have, that we gather together, we get together as a family, we, can, we see different age groups. We see little kids, we see big kids, we get teenagers, we get all older, all older members. But we all have one family. And we need to take care of each other. And we need to, uh, look, you, you guys are going to reach people that I can't. I'm going to reach people that maybe you can't. And that we need to stick together so that we can continue to build this community. Amen. But in order for us to do that, we need to let God take the wheel. We need to allow him to take the wheel. And that we're going to be able to be okay with it. That we're gonna say, you know what, God? I know that I need. I, I, my instinct is saying that I should go left, but you're telling me that I need to go right. So I'm letting you take care of the wheel, and I'm okay with it because I believe that sometimes we don't allow Him to do what, uh, what He needs to do. We want to take control over our own lives, and we and, and we fail left uh, one time, two times, three times. And so we finally learned that, you know, God is in control and God needs to take the wheel and he knows what's best for me. I know, I don't, I don't know what's best for me, but I'm going to trust him and he's going to guide me to where I need to go. And you know, sometimes you want to go to McDonald's, but he says, you know what, you're going to go to Jack in the Box. And that's okay. Right? But at the end of the day, we have to trust in what God has for us. So today I wanna uh, I wanna end with a prayer, and this is the prayer that I uh, um, that, that I wanna end with. Number one, are you hiding something from God? Is there something that's hidden 
hidden that, that you know what that, that you need to let go of that it needs to come out if there's something that you need to let go that is still inside of you that is not letting you completely be with God we have to let it go or is this, uh, or maybe today is the time where you know what you're not letting God take control of the will that you know that you think that you're stronger than God because sometimes us men we think that we can do it all and we're saying you know what I can do it by myself I don't need God and today you have you're realizing that God uh, that you need God to take control of the will and that you want to give it up to Him and give it up to Him today. Maybe today is the day that you need some walls to be broken. Something that is, is, is hurting you inside, that you're like tired of carrying it with you, that you're saying those walls are too high. Look, God, knows, I can't even see the, how I'm going to be able to climb the walls to get out of the wall. How am I supposed to do it? I'm so tired. I, I, I just want to let go of it. And you need those walls to just drop. Then it's time to give it to God. And I believe that God is going to be able to, to uh, today, if, if you are able to just give it to God, He's going to be able to move in your life. And if you put Him in the center of your life, you know, you're going to be victorious. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I see the blessings that God brings me left and right. And you know, there's things that happen to me like today, uh, after, after church, you know, and I, 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 and just like I did last time, you guys remember what, last week when, when I shared that, or two weeks ago that I shared that um, um, I, got, I came into the church with a little argument with Angelica, and I, and, and I apologized here and, and I said I'm sorry because I wanted to make sure that I was 100% ready to worship with the Lord. Today I did the same thing. I said, God, you know, I'm not going to worry about the time. Uh, I know I gotta work tomorrow, but you know what? I wanna come in here and just focus on you. Why am I gonna be focusing on my tire when I came in here to worship God? You know, you made a way for me to make it to church. And I was sharing this with my mom yesterday because she said, hey, I have, uh, uh, my, my, my mom was like, I'm, I'm sharing, uh, uh, she was gonna do the opening uh, verse at uh, her church. And she's like, I'm gonna share with you what I'm gonna, sh uh, what I'm gonna share. And she was talking about Moses. Uh, and this morning I thought about it and I said, you know what? That was exactly what I was talking about yesterday. And uh, Henrika shared it as well. But as, as, as we were going our way to church, things happen. I don't know if it happens to you, but um, Henrika kind of shared this morning that it, it usually happens when you are going to church. Things start happening where uh, you're like, I don't know what, I'm not, not going to go to church today because this happened to me. But things start happening while you're going to church, and then God opens up the, like, like it opens up like the sea, like Moses, right? It opens up the sea, boom. And then you make it to church. Yeah. And once you make it to church, you start focusing on all the stuff that, that just happened. And you're not even focused, you're not even in uh, on what God has for you. You know, so today as I was, I, was, I was coming, I said, you know what, God, you open up the seat. I made it to church, but I don't want to focus on the tire. I don't want to focus on the car. I don't want to focus on work. I don't want to focus on anything. I just want to focus on what you are going to do at church. And I just want to glorify your name. So that's what we need to do every time we come to church. When we come to church, look, if you can kind of come to church to, to go to sleep in a bench, you know, that's not the right way. Right? If you're gonna come to church to do to, to not listen or, or uh, to not listen to what God has for you, we're doing it the wrong way. When you come to church, let's focus on what, what God has for you. He has something specific for every single person here, you know, and he speaks in different in different ways. I love it when we finish service because um, um, sometimes I'll, I'll be like, we'll, we'll be talking and you know, this is what I learned from today's message. This is what I learned. And everybody has a different opinion, you know? But at the end of the day, it's because God has spoke to them in that specific timing because God has something specific for every single one of them every time you come to church. We just got to learn to listen and to be ready to receive it when God is speaking to you. It is, and sometimes it even comes through our worship. Well, we're worshiping God is speaking to you. So today I just wanna I wanna invite you. You know, we're all victorious. Can you look to your neighbor and tell him you're 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 victorious? Just look at him and tell him you're victorious. You're victorious. You're victorious. You have victory. You're victorious. 
You have victory. You're victorious. You have victory. Because you're victorious. Amen. You're victorious, right? You have victory. You're victorious. Because God already, uh, uh, He already came and he, he was in that cross for us. We're victorious. So whenever I see you, and I see you kind of, kind of like with a bad mood, I'm going to be like, hey, you're victorious. No matter what happens, we're going to be joyful. Because we have victory in our lives. And I don't know, like, I, I've been hearing testimonies, like, today I'm just a testimony by having my pastor here. This is a big testimony. I have things that are right to share testimony. What things happened this week and things are happening left and right. But we see the hand of God moving throughout this church. Amen. And blessings are, and blessings are coming. Yeah, we're going to suffer at times, but we got to be joyful because we are victorious. Amen. So we're going to pray. We can just not get up at the same time, but we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this day. We, you have made us victorious, Lord. Today, I just want to ask you, Lord, for anybody in here, Lord, who has those walls that need to break and let them free, Lord, today we want to ask you, Lord, that you are going to be the one God, you're going to be our God, and you're going to take control over any addiction, any, any, any substance that we need to get rid of, Lord. Today, we just want to ask you, Lord, also, that um, anybody who, who needs healing, Lord, that you're going to be with them, Lord. Today, we want to ask you, Lord, that uh, we continue to walk with you, Lord, uh, that you're going to be able to take control of our lives. We don't want to be, uh, we don't want to take control of our lives. We want you to take control of our lives. That you know what's best for us, that you're going to teach us, you're going to guide us, you're going to take us to places where we don't, we don't even think where we're going to be, Lord. Today I want to ask you for this church specifically here in San Bernardino, Lord, that we're going to continue to be the light in this city, Lord. That as, as we continue to grow, as we continue to bring people in here, Lord, that we're going to continue to do what you have call us to do, and that is to uh, uh, deliver the gospel to everybody around here, Lord. We want to ask you for our students, Lord, that they're going to school, Lord, that you're going to be able to protect them, that you're going to give them the, the wisdom that they need to be able to get through their classes, but at the same time, Lord, that they're going to be alive wherever they are at at their schools, Lord. Today, I want to ask you for for those people who are in their jobs, secular jobs, Lord, that you continue to use them in a mighty way that you're going to use them to be the light in their workplaces, Lord. But we also want to ask you, Lord, that you continue to give them the strength, the, everything they need to continue to do their jobs, Lord. And today, Lord, I just want to ask you that, you know, as we come here at church, Lord, that this church building, Lord, that we, 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 we just want to ask you that, that you continue to just give us the wisdom to be able to continue to just uh, um, continue to, to have this place the way you want us to, uh, to run it, Lord. As you see, you have a past, a lead pastor. We want to thank you for having them here one more time, Lord. And today we just want to ask you, Lord, that you continue to give them that vision, that you're going to continue to use them in a mighty way, Lord, that he's going to be here just guiding us, Lord, and continue to just speak to him, Lord, that the vision that you have for him in this church, Lord, we are here here to be able to be vessels for you, Lord, and we just want to ask you, Lord, that you continue to bless every member here, every family represented here, Lord, and just thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Yes. And today, Lord, if there's anything hidden, if we have anything hidden in our hearts, Lord, that we need to let out, Lord, we just want to let it out and give it to you, Lord, and we just want to uh, have our, our peace and joy in our hearts, Lord, to just continue to worship you alone, Lord, and just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in, in, in everybody's life. Thank you for um, going into that cross for our salvation, Lord, and for everything that you have given us. Today, Lord, we just thank you, and we can't thank you enough. In Jesus' mighty name, Mr. Church says, Amen. 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 On July 7, the LCS saw something very exciting happen. Tony and Carmen, if you can come up, I want to go ahead and do it. Oh, hello. 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 Booyah. <laughs> Booyah.
this. So for those of you guys that don't know, we have baptisms uh, uh, probably a month ago. And we, we gave some of the certificates, but we had two left over, and we were just saving them for you. But, you know, this is a declaration that you guys are ready to continue to move forward with God, and you made it publicly, you know, and as a church, we're here for you guys, and we're ready to, like, go to battle with you guys if you guys need to, right? But we, we're going to be here for you guys, and you guys are part of our church. We love you guys. Thank you guys for being you got something. Um, I just want to say that I'm so blessed and I love all of you. I love this church. I love all what God has done for me and Tony and our family. We've come a long way of everything that we have been through. Our lives, I mean, in turmoil, like very bad. I never thought in a million years that I'll be standing here today serving the Almighty. And I feel so good inside. I'm, I feel so glad. So a different person was born that day that I got baptized. That was the best feeling in my life. From the day I was born, I was reborn again, Amen. and it was beautiful. And for me and Tony to be standing here today, yes, serving Christ, Amen. is the most, <laughs> most wonderful blessing Amen. anyone could ever have. And that's a victory. Yeah. That's a victory. Thank you all. I love you all so much. Thank you. Pastor Mike, so glad to see you here. Pastor Mike. And Pastor Mark Carlos and everyone, we love you all. Thank you. Can we get somebody to take a picture with them holding this up? Could you get in the middle here? You guys, this is a big occasion. Can you be able to look back on this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. 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 All right, can you give glory to God? Just give a big clap for us tonight. Can you all uh, worship God on last night? Amen? Yep. Amen. All together? Amen. Amen. Amen.
next Sunday, I want to invite all of you to come out, invite a friend. We have the Hacienda Men's Group. They're coming out next Sunday. Okay. Paul Nunoz, he's made it a whole year. So we're going to celebrate this next Sunday. We're going to have a graduation service for him. And you're just, just when you come out, come out excited. It's a party for me. We made it a whole year. I'm so excited that he has been able to do this. And once they come out here, he's going to invite his family. So let's have the church family come out and let's support him in this. Can we do that next yeah. Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Carlos has talked about community. God, we cannot do this alone. And we know how powerful it is when we look at the scriptures and we see the gospel message. When we see the letters of Paul and Peter and John, that when we get together, there's nothing that can stop us. And God, we're so thankful for each other. And Father, I pray that we will just reach out across this place today. People that are missing, people that are sick, people that are home that can't be here, that we will notice that they're missing and we'll begin to pray for them. Yeah. God, we'll lift them up and we'll encourage them. Maybe, maybe even give them a phone call, Lord, to just encourage them and pray with the phone with them. And Father, we thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives because you know, we know you're coming again soon. Yeah. And God, we're just getting prepared. It's just preparation for heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.